Hello. So to summarize what we have done in this example is like this. Uh, the general framework for a hypothesis testing about the population mean. I'm going to consider the population mean only in this course because it's simple enough and but general enough. So we are going to consider the null hypothesis that the population I believe that the population mean is a certain number mu zero. So but remember it is actually a number. Uh, this is a parameter, this is a number. So like thirty hours or whatever hours, right? It's your belief. So it should be a specific value. And H one is the alternative, simply the negation. It's it's uh so you believe if your belief is wrong, then you are taking something different, right? And the uh, significance level will be alpha, which is what you choose. So it's it's uh, not a concern. And from the data, you need the sample mean as a test statistic observation, and standard deviation uh, need to be calculated because we need the parameter for the standard normal distribution. A parameter for the normal distribution and sample size which is simple so this is so this is all we need and so the I explained all like I spent a lot of time a long hour maybe a full hour to explain the concept but in the end the algebra is mechanical it's pretty simple so remember what we are going to use is the sampling distribution of the test statistic sampling distribution of the uh, sample mean and its parameter is from one the mean is from the hypothesis null hypothesis and you need this guy and this guy so these these are from the data s and n are from data and remember so far x bar this x bar is a random variable unrealized uh, distribution but here uh, you have a one value, one specific value of x bar from the data and use that to calculate the t statistic. You can calculate that you observe x bar from the data and mu is your belief, mu zero is your belief and standardize it. So you may interpret this as the difference between your data and your belief and standardized. So standardized difference between your data and your belief. That is the t statistic. And then the p value is the probability outside of the, the t statistic. But you have to consider both uh, sides. So negative sides and the positive side too. So calculate that probability. This process is pretty simple because it is already standardized. So you need a, a calculator. That's it. Okay, this is a simple summary of the steps. And in the end, algebraically, what you need is just to calculate this and this. The other steps are so it's just conceptual things and it's also theoretical results. And using that, you calculate these two. And at the end, compare the p-value with the significance level. If p-value is too small, you reject. If the p-value is too large, you do not reject. That is, uh, that is the 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 storyline how we conduct a hypothesis testing. So now let's consider a new pair of hypotheses. I will give you the like, same context. But say, suppose that for the final exam, I believe that students study 50 hours. And so I surveyed 100 students again, and I obtained the sample average is 56 hours, and standard deviation was 20 hours. So uh, we, will, we will do the algebra step by step, which is pretty simple. So first, calculate the t statistic using those numbers. T statistic, remember T statistic is the difference between your belief and the data, data and the belief. 
and then standardize that. That is um, given here. So try to calculate this by yourself after pausing the video. Okay, let's. I will turn. So the T statistic is calculated this way. The data says 56 hours. I believe 50 hours and standardize using the the central limit theorem's parameter, uh, the standard deviation of a single outcome over square root of si sample size. So we will get three. And then this is the standardized difference between data and belief. Then what is the p-value? P-value is the probability outside of this T statistic, which is already standardized, outside of T statistic, but you have to consider two sides, two tails at the same time when you calculate the p-value. Again, uh, you can use this formula. Again, uh, pause the video and calculate this by yourself. Okay, I will turn the page. It is calculated this way, pretty simple. Uh, the T statistic was calculated as 3, so we need probability smaller than minus 3 and greater than 3. Uh, if you use uh, any, any, any calculator, uh, those two probabilities must be the same because they are symmetric. So the distribution is symmetric, so those two uh, probabilities must be the same. So no matter what you calculate, uh, you just need to calculate one and then the other guys follows automatically. Uh, so uh, the probability, the p-value is 0.27%. That means your observation, your data is top 0.2% suspicious. It's a very different, one of the most different top 0.2% different outcome from your belief. Uh, and your significance level is 1%, then comparing these two, can you reject your null hypothesis or not? Choose it. Uh, and the answer is yes, you can reject. Because, so again, think about ranking. Your outcome, your observation is one of the very, very unlikely or very different from your belief within top 0.27% but your cutoff is 1% so you you are you decided to reject anything within top percent top 1% but it is yes it is within 1% so you have to reject it so then you may think it this way okay uh uh, we, I believe that the mean is 50 hours, but uh, your observation is 56 hours. It can be, it can be a random matter, right? That makes sense. The difference of six hours can be a random matter, but when I calculate the probability, the probability of that much random matter is only 0.27%, which is very, very unlikely. So to have such a big uh, random matter, a very small probability should have occurred, which is unlikely. So rather than keeping my belief, I would uh, like, so to keep my belief, I have to believe in that small probability happened, but that's uh, too small. So uh, I'm going to give up my belief. So that is a more casual way to explain the rationale behind hypothesis testing. And as you see, conceptually very complicated, but algebraically the techniques, uh, the step-by-step the -step algebra are pretty simple, right? And most of the algebra are what we did in, in, in earlier chapters. So I believe it's more important. What's more important in this chapter is to understand the conceptual framework. Also, uh, and then 
if you have uh, if you are good if you are good at uh, the earlier chapters then following this algebra is uh, is pretty simple should be pretty simple okay so uh, the last topic we are going to consider is uh, the more more uh, it's, uh, it's about three decision rules so far I learned we learned conceptual framework and uh, how we uh, apply the method algebraically to a specific numerical example and now I will give you three different ways uh, to present the results so there are three different uh, ways are used in in practice so for example some statistical processes when you run you can run uh, hypothesis testing on a program it returns many numbers in the result table you will find a lot of numbers uh, on the program and because there are three different ways to present the result so uh, as you need to understand them I will explain how they differ but it's pretty uh, simple the three ways uh, to present the result is R p-value t-statistic and critical value so p-value and t-statistic are uh, what we used earlier and critical value is the only uh, new uh, new concept here so let me explain the p-value and the t-statistic first ah uh, by the way these three ways they are they are, they have different names and different uh, scales different numbers but mathematically equivalent just it's uh, whether you if you use if you decide whether to reject or not using the p-value should be the should have the same result if you decide based on t statistic because both are calculated from the same same data if they are calculated from the same data the rejection re the result uh, should be the same so whether it so they they differ but only by how how you standardize the probability the the random variable so let's think about let's think about the p-value uh, approach first p-value approach is how I introduced the problem earlier so calculate the sample average and standardize so remember from the data to the conclusion which steps we have to go through first you get the data and uh, then from them uh, you calculate the sample average x bar and second you standardize the sample average uh, or that's the standardized difference between the data and the hypothesis which is the t statistic that's the second step and the third step is calculate the probability outside of the t statistic that is the p-value and then finally in the fourth step you make the decision uh, to reject if the p-value is too small smaller than the significance level otherwise you do not reject so these are four steps so so four steps and in the end your decision is based on the p-value so I you you can think it this way so when you like uh, use a statistical program if you enter data your program returns the p-value then you can make the decision by yourself pretty simply right so so the uh, program may return p-value that's the p-value approach uh, like calculating the p-value uh, is simple uh, we learned uh, we learned how to calculate that but the reason why p-value is widely used is because it depends only on the data of course your hypothesis and your data uh, that means it does not depend on the choice of significance level so choice of the significance level may change from a uh, researcher to another or person to another so it's subjective so p-value is, uh, is p-value is only the objective uh, things so if a statistical program calculates the p-value for you then you may choose 
whatever significance level you want. So it's you do not need to recalculate uh, the outcome if you change the significance level. That is an advantage of using the p-value. So, <clears throat> uh, so then, in other words, changing the significance level does not affect the p-value. So uh, then we can think about what happens when alpha increases. When you increase the significance level, you are rejecting more, uh, m more. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, like in the end, you are com like because you are in comparing the significance level and the p-value in the last step. The higher the significance level is, the more, uh, the more observations will be rejected. So, so p-value. So, like if if H chair is rejected at 5% significance level, then you can guess that the p-value must be within the top 5%. So p-value must be smaller than 5%. So, so automatically, if you consider higher significance level, the data will be rejected again. The hypothesis will be rejected again if it was rejected at 5%. So uh, uh, higher higher alpha leads to more rejections. That's what we can learn easily from the p-value approach. And I'm going to stop here. In the next uh, lecture, I will explain the t-statistic approach, which is very similar to the p-value approach, and the critical value approach, which will be more useful in the following chapters. OK, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, have a nice, nice day. See you later. Bye.